Hey guys, Michael Corsentino for Shutter Magazine with my March 2018 lighting tutorial. Uh, if you like this content, which I'm sure you do every month it comes to you here on YouTube, do yourself a favor and head over to BehindTheShutter.com and set yourself up with a subscription to the monthly print and digital magazine. Uh, every month there's amazing content in there delivered right to your door. So head on over there and get that all taken care of. This month I want to walk you step by step through how I created this product photography shot that you're looking at now. Uh, this is a new line of business for a new client that I picked up um, shooting for a magazine called Tone Audio Magazine, one of the leading voices in uh, high-end hi-fi. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty cool assignment because it allows me to combine my love of photography as well as my log love for high-end audio. So pretty nice to be able to combine those two things. Um, so one of the first things that I do when I'm just doing any kind of photography, uh, but especially so when it's something that is new to me, is to research what's been done, uh, who's doing the best work, how they're doing it, what it looks like, um, you know, reach out to them if possible and find out, you know, what are they doing, how are they doing it. Uh, how are they lighting it? Uh, in the case of product photography, what surfaces are they using to create reflections and to shoot on? Um, there are all sorts of different surfaces, which we'll cover some of them. Um, so, you know, just really doing my homework and figuring out what people are doing. What can I do differently? What can I bring to the table? What do I want to do, you know, like they're doing? And, and how do I want to try to differentiate myself? So let me walk you through uh, exactly what's what here. Obviously here, this is the final image that we're looking at and we'll work our way back to this. So the first thing that I needed to do was to build myself a work table. Um, now if you're like me and you have a studio, I, I'm sure that it's a multi-purpose space as mine is. And so I didn't want to have, uh, they are, there are still life tables that you can, that you can buy. Uh, first of all, they're expensive. Uh, they're usually a, a frame, a metal frame with a plexiglass, um, kind of a sweep, a, a curved, uh, you know, backdrop uh, and, a, and a surface that you can put the product on. So you can light through it, um, and, but it, uh, and that's one of the one of the amenities of it. But what I found was that that is kind of a, a, a an outdated style that not a lot of people are doing that. So that kind of took the need for that off the table, no pun intended. Um, and they're also really large, uh, you know, four feet by six feet. This this these kinds of sizes. So uh, they're not small uh, and they don't store easily. So they were it was really kind of a you know a non-starter for me to get one of those. They're about thousand dollars as well. Uh, so what I did was I wanted to build myself something that I could break down easily and store when it wasn't in use so that when I was doing fashion work or portraits or what have you that I didn't have to have a big honking still life photography table in my studio. So I just built one uh, using what you're seeing here which are these uh, collapsible saw horses here, metal saw horses, and then I bolted um, uh, or screwed uh, two by fours onto those so that they would be as wide as this four by eight sheet of plywood here. Uh, and I also bolted um, two by fours to the bottom uh, of this sheet of two by four. This is actually two uh, half inch sheets of two uh, four by eight plywood uh, with a two by four screwed underneath in order to give it uh, stability and keep it from flexing if I placed anything really heavy on top here because some of these audio components can be you know upwards of 80 pounds so uh, this gave me the sur surface and space to work on now I also have apple boxes so when I need to work from above because sometimes you need to shoot products directly from above uh, I can just put some apple boxes down here take these out uh, and the surface can rest on the apple box. So it's really flexible. Here you see uh, some of the surfaces that I got. I went to a local cabinet uh, wholesale uh, warehouse, I guess, uh, and I got these sheets of um, uh, Formica, uh, also known as Arborite in some markets, but here in the U.S. it's called uh, Formica. Uh, and I got these sheets, I got two sheets of white, uh, one in gloss and one in matte, and, one, and two sheets of black, also gloss and matte. 
um, so that I could, you know, create a bunch of different surfaces um, and some reflective and some more matte. Um, other surfaces that you may, you know, want to incorporate if you want to do this kind of work are exotic woods, uh, wood veneers are also an option, um, and stone, different kinds of stones, uh, as well as fabrics. Uh, but for this, for the purposes of this, for this kind of product photography, uh, what was more commonplace was uh, either gloss or matte white or gloss or matte black surfaces, right? So here's my setup. This is how what, what got me kind of started. Uh, and let's progress forward into our lighting. All right. So most of the time, what I found was that people were using... Uh, anywhere from you know three lights and up in order to create these setups, uh, but I really like to try and reduce and pare down and only add lights as needed. So I started with one light in order to kind of uh, approximate what 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 I was seeing being done elsewhere. Uh, so essentially, by using reflectors, I do have three lights here, but I'm only needing to use one strobe. So let's let's break it down. Uh, you've got I've got the strobe here with a reflector. This is uh, a uh, going into a 7B pack, which you can see here. Profoto 7B pack is a 1200 watt second pack. I shot at f22, so you need a lot of power uh, for, for this. I wanted I wanted a deep uh, depth of field for this because uh, that is another one of the things that you know. Um, with product photography, uh, you know, not all the time, but most of the time, you want a lot of detail uh, throughout the entire, uh, you know, depth of the image, uh, focal length. Okay, so then I'm I've got a seven inch reflector. This is just a standard reflector, and that is being shot through this three by three scrim. This is a Lastalite scrim, uh, and it's shooting through there to diffuse it and broaden it. So it essentially takes that light and makes it a really broad source. All right, uh, you could use a softbox, but I, 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 this was easier and it gave me a, a bigger source than using a Honkin uh, softbox as well, a lot less cumbersome. Um, okay, and then I've got here, a reflector here and a reflector here. So essentially this is creating two other light sources, which are gonna be used to fill in the left and right sides as we step through this, all right? So that's it. it you know, I was able to really keep it to this very, very simple uh, setup in order to create this nice effect. And here you can see the final, uh, we're gonna step through this step by step, but this, I, I ended up using the matte black. I'm gonna show you why as we walk through this. And then you can see here, I've used a black seamless uh, for the background, okay? Let's, move forward. Okay, so here you can see where I started out. Uh, and you can see here that I am using the gloss uh, for mica, and I'm going to show you why that didn't work. Uh, and you can see here that right now I don't have any of the side lights happening and the product is not in place and all of that. We, right now we just have our key light in place. Here you can see the product in place with a white balance card. This is a color checker passport. So I put this in there uh, when I'm doing my setup shot in order so that later on in post, I can grab a white balance using this. You'll just use the white balance tool and that allows you to create accurate color balance. Very important in product photography. So you always wanna use a white balance target of one kind or another. Uh, and obviously here you can see that we've got the product in place. Um, uh, and you can see what effect I'm getting by shooting on the gloss for mica. Now, a lot of times gloss for mica will work for you, but in this instance, it was not. I was getting really unpredictable, wavy kinds of uh, reflections that were not working. Next time I'm gonna use black uh, plexiglass. I've got some ordered and I think that will yield a better uh, result. Um, but in this case, and this was dead flat, but still, you know, I could not get it to, to give me the reflection that I wanted. Um, now, granted, I could have gone in here and massaged the reflection um, in Photoshop if I wanted to, but I figured I would just, you know, add, uh, add the reflection in post as I ended up doing um, and try some different things. So let's move on to our next try, which was I wanted to see, let's see how it would look on uh, Black Seamless. Um, and again, you, you can see here that with the seamless, it's again, it's not working because this ends up being too matte. Uh, and uh, you can see I would have had to do a lot more work in post uh, to get this bl as black as I wanted. Uh, you know, the, the, this, the paper reflects a lot more light than the Formica does. So the paper was, again, a non-starter, not gonna work. 
Uh, and here we are with the matte black Formica. And this ended up being the best compromise short of using the black flexi glass, which I did not have at that point. Um, so because the uh, gloss Formica didn't work, I ended up using the matte Formica and that gave me a little bit of a reflection, but I would need to really beef this up in post, but it gave me a nice matte black. It sucked up a lot of the light. Uh, and it was really kind of that my starting point. Now you can also see here that we're only using our key light, okay? So you can see here that this is really dark and this is dark and I really want to like kind of beef up all this and add in some light and give it some dimension uh, and you know a nice polished look, which right now it's just a starting point with just our key light. So let's move forward and now we're adding in our side lights. Now what I did was I started by playing around with the reflective surfaces that are used. You can see here that there are two reflectors and what this is going to do is add light from either side into the product and you know open it up a little bit because right now it's for my money it was you know too much in shadow. Um, so and obviously you can see your camera position as well. So this gives you an idea where I was where I was shooting from. Um, so with the reflectors uh, they're silver and white reflective surfaces. So I used white here and I used silver here. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me less light coming from from the left and more right coming in from the uh, from the right. Okay, so you really you can always do that if you want more or less light. You know, rely on the fabrics uh, that are the, that the reflector uh, is using in order to do that. White is going to give you less reflection and silver is going to give you more. All right, so let's take a look at how we started adding our light. Here we have our before the reflectors shot. So you can see here, let me just show you what I wanted to do here again. I wanted to open this up, brighten this up, and I wanted to add some more light in here. I wanted more light here and a little bit less light here, but I still wanted more than what was there right now. All right, so let's move forward. And there you go. Then you can see here that I have added uh, I've added light on the uh, left hand side. You can see there. There we have more light than we had before. Let's turn that off. And now we're going to add more light to the right side. You can see that. Now that's just done with reflectors. I love what you can do with reflectors. So again, here we are before and now with both of those reflectors added in. Okay, again, that uh, was silver uh, on the right-hand side, camera right, and white, camera left. Again, here's what the setup looked like. Here's a shot from behind, so you can see that. So again, you can see here, silver here, white here, one key light, we're able to create a really cool looking product shot using just one light and two reflectors. All right, so here's the final shot that I ended up using in post. So let's talk about a little bit about what I did in post. So obviously in post, uh, I needed to clone out all of this stuff, right? So I just used content aware fill and the clone tool in order to get rid of all of that stuff. Um, and I also beefed up this reflection by mirroring this. I took this and I duplicated it um, and I uh, dragged it down and had to reshape it a little bit because of perspective issues. Um, and then I added all sorts of gradient shading to it. I uh, used the gradient tool and I created lots of different shading to make the lighting look more realistic and natural as a reflection would. Okay, so let's take a look there. So again, before Photoshop, after Photoshop. So hopefully next time I'll be able to do a lot more of this in camera by using uh, plexiglass, but I'm really happy with the result. Not bad for my first foray into product photography. Uh, the thing you want to keep in mind when doing any kind of photography, uh, which I always remind myself, is you don't need to know everything 
that there is about a subject. You just need to know what you want to do to create what you're trying to do at any given time. So don't get overwhelmed. You know, take things one step at a time, you know, baby steps. Um, and, uh, you know, you can do a lot with, with a little bit. That's why I wanted to show you this again, you know, one light. I talk a lot in my, in my, um, portrait and fashion work. I talk a lot about what you can do with one light. So it was really nice to see that, uh, that really also applied to product photography. So there you go. That's going to wrap it up for this month. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Again, this is stuff that you can apply uh, to any product. So if you're in the wedding and portrait world and you sell stuff like albums, and various products, you can definitely use these techniques to photograph those products and put them online and help boost your sales. So again, that's going to wrap it up for this month. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have, and I will see you next time here at BehindTheShutter.com.